Hi, my name is Judy Scott, and I am the current president of the Scandinavian Cultural Council. I was born here in Tacoma, Washington. My parents were Bill and Helen Scott. My mother, Helen, was originally Helen Miller, and her family moved to Tacoma in 1932 uh, because my grandfather got a position as a professor at the University of Puget Sound. And he is the one who was born in Norway. He came here as an, uh, basically an 11 year old. He turned 11 the day they arrived in Ellis Island from Norway. And the place they were from in Norway is called Snertinga. And it's just uh, on the west side of the big lake Mjosa on the east side of Norway. Um, and uh, these two paintings are very special to me and they have a great history in our family. What I'd like to share first is that uh, this is a picture I grew up seeing in my grandparents, um, Christian and Mercy Miller, in their home in Tacoma. And I always thought it was quite gloomy because of the colors. But then I finally found out that this was the place where my grandfather was born. It was the mill that they called Kvernstua, you know, which means mill place. And that is where my great-grandfather became the miller when he was only 19 years old. And then my grandmother, Agneta, who was 18 years his senior, became the woman who managed everything while he was taking care of the mill, which is what you see right here. This is the house that they lived in, the cabin where my grandfather was born. These were uh, barns uh, for their animals that they had cows and chickens and sheep there at the mill. And this is the Stock River that runs by that would bring the logs from the lake down to the mill. The mill not only did wood, but it also did uh, grinding of wheat for folks in the valley too, who were farmers, because on the east side of Norway they're farmers. So it was a great adventure and a lot of work for my great grandparents, Edvard and Agneta Müller. So the story goes that um, the fa they ended up coming to the United States, not my grandmother Agneta though, because she ended up dying from tuberculosis. So when grandfather remarried uh, Helena, the milkmaid up the, at the big farm up the hill, they decided to come here because she had relatives that were already in Wisconsin. So this became a very important thing to have to leave, but they wanted a new life in America. In 1946, after World War II, my grandfather Christian, who'd been staying in touch with his family the whole time, came over to Norway on a professorship, an exchange professorship with the University of Oslo. He and my grandmother Mercy were there for an entire year and definitely reconnected with the whole family. They brought over two trunks of items that had not been able to be purchased in Norway under the German occupation. And they really became rather like heroes in the valley, especially because here was the Miller's boy who has become a professor at a university in the United States. So while they were there during that trip in 1946 to 1947, they were gifted this picture by uh, Mr. Mierheim in Snertingal. And it's because his family moved into the mill after my great-grandparents moved out that he was able to accurately draw this picture. So it's very significant. So this, that's how old this picture is. In 1975, I, as a one-year Norwegian student here at PLU, went over to visit and live with my relatives in Norway for an entire summer. That was a bit of a culture shock because I had learned Bukmal and when I got to the valley I found out that they have their own dialect. So I was definitely having to relearn even the simplest of words because of uh, needing to get acquainted with that dialect. I had an incredible time and believe me my Norwegian was much better when I came back to school after that. The gift was that I returned back in 1979 after I'd gotten married and had been a nurse for a while. And when I was over there this time, in 1979, I met the artist Ivar Mierheim. And we had a gathering of relatives and he'd heard that I was there 
and it was a great opportunity to meet and to go down to the mill place and what he offered to do for me that I didn't pay for it was an absolute gift was that he painted this oil for me and he sent it back home to me after I had returned so again this is Kvarnstua, the mill place where my grandparents, uh, great grandparents lived, and my grandfather was born right here in this cabin. And I, this is probably more accurate even than the first painting. And you can see how he developed as an artist from the first picture to the second picture, and how there's actually more detail with the even more correct hill that is behind the uh, the mill. And again, the Stock River running through that comes down from the lake, Ringshon, that brings, brought the logs to them. And this was a place that had many triumphs and many tragedies, uh, including, as I spoke earlier, the death of my great-grandmother, Agnetha. My grandfather, Christian Miller, the professor at University of Puget Sound, wrote about the uh, life that they had there and in, 19, in 2018 I was able to go and make a present several presentations in Norway about that to them to share with them about what the life of the common person was in Norway. When my friend Finn Brobakken who lives in Snortingdal also came over and visited my home and he saw these paintings he looked at me with great astonishment and said where did you get those? So I told him, I said, well, Mr. Erheim painted this one for my grandparents back in the middle 1940s, and then he did this one for me in 1979, and he said, do you know how valuable those are and how famous he is? I didn't know, but I do know that I cherish both of these very, very much, and our family as well, because this is, this is our heritage and our location in Norway. Uh, so, where do you keep them now? Right now, this one, uh, it resides above, uh, on the wall in my little apartment that I have until I get my new house. And this one is at the end of the stairwell, so unfortunately they're not together. But when I have my house and when I have it again, I will put them side by side so that they both uh, have a place of honor. So Judy, what, what is, for this painting, what is the emotional core of it for you? What, what is the thing that hits you most about it? Well, I was really fortunate to get there in 1975 as the first family member since my grandfather to visit the relatives in Norway. So they took me down to the mill site and at that time in 1975, this portion of the mill was still standing. And to see that and to see the colors, first of all, when I got there, I felt like I was home. And where did that come from? Because I hadn't really read my grandfather's story, but I felt like I was home when I got there. And then you see the colors of everything, you know, made out of simple rough hewn wood, and you just know how difficult that life was for my family that lived there. My great grandfather, Edvard, had to do everything for maintenance. On that he, he did the iron he was an iron worker there's a shed that's still there that um, also housed the loggers but there's also the outline of the foundation of where he used to smith the iron that would make all of this and then in reading my grandfather's stories knowing how hard they worked my grandmother great-grandmother when she would bake the cookies and have the coffee already and slap my grandfather's hand when he was trying to sneak a cookie and say no those are for our guests they're bringing their wheat or they're getting their wood and we need to save them for them because they're honored they bring us business so and the other thing is that it was an honored position to be the miller when you were a common servant worker there so my grandparents were really up the chain so to speak, because they had their own house. They weren't living in servants' quarters. So even while this looks very tough, to them it was an honor to be there and to work as hard as they did to bring in the revenue for the big landowner, who was also a very, very kind man and uh, even paid for my grandmother's funeral when she died to give her honor. So um, oh, yeah, this, again, this is our family roots. This is where we started. This is where they labored. And this is where they left with their hearts breaking. Even my grandfather 
It wasn't until he saw everything up for auction, and particularly the bed that his mother died in, there in that cabin. That's when the hugeness of the whole situation of immigrating really hit him. And for me to come back and to see it for myself has just been an incredible experience in my own life. Thank you. Is there anything else that you would like to add? I'm just really grateful uh, that I have been able to stay in touch with all my relatives. I'm grateful to PLU to have taught me, Alan Toven, thank you, uh, ta taught me Norwegian and the basics. But it's really my relatives in Norway that have taught me so very much and continue to, and the relationship and love that we still share is just uh, and foundation in my life and I am so grateful for that. So I really encourage other people to go look for your roots if you haven't. Go meet your relatives because you just might find that you just have so much in common and you feel so comfortable with them just like I did. And I've always been made welcome at the farm up on the hill that's named Lisha with my Alund relatives that are part of the whole big family that I have over there. And uh, it's I, I feel so lucky and blessed to have that in my life. Thank you. When I was in Norway in 2018 giving the lectures about my grandfather's writings, one of the honors, the biggest honor really that I've gotten was that the local newspaper did an article on me and my picture was taken with my Norwegian mom and one of my cousins, um, and they dubbed me a real snerting dollar. And to me, to be to told that I'm a real person from the valley, that means an incredible lot to me. That, that the sense of belonging. Yeah, it really is. I really, be I belong there. It's my other home. Yeah, I, that's how I feel. Yeah. So to you, some talk all that.